despite the fact that in many parts of the country, including in Boston, where we are now, it's still 90 plus degrees outside. Autumn is just around the corner. It's a beautiful time of year and a time, I think, when we uh, contemplate the autumn of our lives, so to speak. The fact that all of us have a destiny beyond this world. At some point, we know not when, all of us will come to the end of our earthly life. One day, we will die. Jesus addresses this head-on in today's gospel. Stay awake, he says. Be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. This is meant less as a threat and really more as a warning. Do we think about our mortality? Is it something that we would prefer to avoid? We can't avoid the reality of it, uh, but many of us avoid talking about it. When the end of this earthly life comes, whenever that moment is, will we be prepared? So I was praying about this. I was reminded of a book I read, written by a professor of philosophy at Boston College, a convert to Catholicism named Dr. Peter Kreeft. The book is entitled, Love is Stronger Than Death. There's a very powerful section about midway through the book when he challenges his readers. Instead of just listening to me talk about death, Dr. Kreeft says, think of it more personally. Lay the book down, he writes, and ask yourself what you would think, feel, say, and do if you knew that this was the last 10 minutes of your life. What would you think, feel, say, and do if you knew that this was the last 10 minutes of your life? I did this, my friends. I was going to say that it wasn't easy, but it turned out that is not true. In some ways, I knew right away what I would think and say and do. First thing I would do is I would thank God for everything that I have and everything that I had. One of the most precious things I was thinking I own is my memories. I think of riding in the station wagon, sitting next to my mother as a little boy on the way to the beach. I think of sitting next to my dad so close our bodies were touching at, at Mass, where we would all go as a family. I would thank God for that. I would ask God with all my heart to forgive me for my sins. I would tell my family and my friends how much I loved them. I would tell them how much I love God. All of this begs a question, my friends. Why do we wait to do these things? All we have is this moment, and it's a gift. My friends, the more we think about death, I think the less frightening it becomes. We should be in awe of its power on one level. I've always said it's bad theology and frankly overly sentimental to reduce it to just another phase of our existence. In many ways, death is the enemy. Robbing death of its power really demeans the majesty and the triumph of the resurrection, the triumph over death. But God is love and love is stronger than death. If we live in a way that shows God we want to be with him, the promise of eternal life with him awaits us. St. Francis was someone who thought about these things often. He kept a skull in his cell at the monastery to remind him to always live with an appreciation for death, that he may have an appreciation for life, eternal life and live in a way that showed that he wanted to spend it with the Lord. He knew that our time on earth was finite, and when death came, he did not want to be dragged to it, kicking and screaming. He wanted to take its hand, humbly trusting in Jesus' mercy and promise to those who love him. He once wrote a canticle that has since become quite famous. In it, he referred to all of, his, all of nature, pardon me, as his intimate friend. Be praised, my Lord, through brother sun who brings this day, through sister moon and the stars whom you have made bright, precious, and beautiful. He concludes with these words. Be praised, my Lord, through our sister, death. Happy those she finds doing your holy will. 
for death can do no harm to them.